Hello and welcome to News Laundry Interviews. I am Amit Bhardwaj. And today we have with us former academician, sephologist, political scientist, anti graft activist turned politician, and the head of newly formed political party, Swaraj India, Mr. Yogendra Yadav. Thank welcome you. Sir. That was a mouthful of an introduction. <laughs> so, uh, in the last interview that I have with you, I'll repeat the same question Why Swaraj India? Because at the moment in this country, there is not a single political force, and I mean it seriously, not one political force which has the vision, the will, and the stamina to, to, to take up the challenge that is posed in, the Indi in India today the challenge to the very idea of India. At the moment, some of the foundational values of the Indian Republic are under challenge. When something happens in Gujarat, it's not just about one Dalit community. When something happens on beef eating, it's not just one particular community. The very vision of India is under challenge. The vision of India is under challenge because of a certain capture of some kinds of interest. You find the country signing a deal with France today and next day you have a small announcement saying they have entered into a deal with one of the leading uh, companies of the country. Mm -hmm. So the challenge of cloning capitalism, challenge to democratic institutions so of a kind we have never seen before. This is the challenge to the very idea of India and I maintain seriously there is no political force in the country today which is willing to take that on. When you say the idea of India is under attack or it's under challenge, are you referring to the party which is in power at the centre, which is the principal governing party? In some ways it is true that uh, Mr. Narendra Modi and his government symbolises that threat to the very idea of India, to the idea of democracy, to the idea of diversity, to the idea of development for the last person. But let us not only blame Mr. Modi. Mr. Modi happens to symbolize the coming together of all the challenges, but other political parties are in no fundamental ways different. On crony capitalism, I can't see how Congress is any different. I can't see how the so-called Samajwadi party is any different. I can't see how most of these regional parties are any different. On challenge to democracy from complete one-person control rule, I would still say Mr. Narendra Modi is some steps behind Mr. Karunaniti, Badal, Jayalalita, Mulayam Singh Yadav, Lalu Prasad Yadav and Kejriwal these days. I mean, the whole thing is run by one person shows. So why blame only Mr. Modi? The personality. The, and on the question of secularism, I think let's be honest. Yes, what Mr. Modi does challenges the very foundation of a secular republic. But these are, it is, I, I honestly blame the secular political forces for bringing the country, the so-called secular political mm -hmm. forces, for bringing the country to a situation where someone like Mr. Modi was acceptable to them. So I blame the entire political establishment. This entire establishment has brought this country to a point where the very foundational values of our republics are under challenge and threat. But in 2013, when you were part of Aam Admi Party, people trusted an experiment, right? an alternative promise for, at least the promise for alternative politics. Do you think that peop now the c citizens of the country, the voters of the country are ready to take another experiment, they'll accept another experiment? It is true that uh, some failure of one experiment makes you a little more cynical, little more allergic, as they say in Hindi, Dood ka jala chach ko bhi phunk phunk ke peeta hai. I understand that. Mm -hmm. But my simple reasoning is that you go and buy a bad product in the market. Next day, you don't decide, you don't decide that I shall never visit the market again. 
you choose a different kind of shop. But you, you were part of you, you, you were part of that company, which people bought the pro the product which people bought from the market. You were part of the manufacturing and the company. And the first ones to alert when things started going wrong. The first ones, if I may say so, that's these are things I don't want to talk about. But the, the, I think the public can see that these people could have got some prize for just being silent. I mean, sirf chup rehna tha. Apne aap sab kuch ho jata tha. But uh, and everyone said it's how foolish you are in a ruling party at the height of success, mm -hmm. and you are asking questions. Chup rao bhi thodi de. Do you think we you did that? Prashant Pushan did that, and I think public must have seen that as well. Have you seen any support from people, uh, at least the voters in Delhi, in past 18 months uh, when you were leading Swaraj Abhiyan? Are people like, ready to accept this experiment? I wouldn't say about voters because honestly, we have not gone to them as voters. But uh, three categories I would isolate. One former Aam Aadmi Party, former India Against Corruption volunteers. Mm -hmm. Wherever I have gone, dozens of them come, they hold my hand and say, someone has to bring it back. They narrate their personal stories. They want to do something. They are, they are not cynical. They want to do and they are looking for some way of realizing their dream. Second, oh, yeah those discerning people who can already see where things are headed, they always come and say, don't worry, it's tough, but keep it up. And among young people, they are not as cynical as we imagine them to be. Young people are willing to try, they are willing to learn from mistakes, willing to move forward. This is what has given me hope. I would not make so false claims about So what alt voters. alternative are you giving to these three category of people who are coming to you? We are starting at the moment for me to make grand claims on the basis of something which is born two days ago would be somewhat silly. What I can say is one, A, this is not a product which is only two days old. We have worked for 18 months. And the things we did were not merely things about political opportunism. Everyone thought the moment we formed Swaraj Abhiyan that we would spend all our energies in opposing Aam Aadmi Party and Kejriwal. And what did we do? We worked on drought, we worked on farmers' uh, suicides, we worked on uh, farmers' uh, condition in the country, traveled to places which has nothing to do with Aam Aadmi Party or all the antics that we see in Delhi. Mm -hmm. We exposed corruption of the ruling party in the country today, of helicopter deals, of Shahabuddin and so on. Who would do that? Did we get votes out of it? No. But you do certain things because we want to. So that's one thing we've done. Second, in our constitution, we have incorporated features which are more assuring for transparent functioning. The first political party in this country which says, yes, we want RTI. We are willing to submit ourselves to that. Transparency in functioning, mm -hmm. decentralization, non-use of WIP. Mm -hmm. These are good starting points. For me to claim that this gives you perfect guarantee, nothing in politics gives you guarantee. Uh, your constitution, the party constitution, it looks like uh, what Aam Aadmi Party promised at the beginning, what you people promised at the beginning. So how is it different from Aam Aadmi Party? And if things did not work out in that a uh, faction, how it would work out here? Well, one of the reasons why Aam Aadmi Party constitution had some of these features is because Prashant Bhushan was one of those who drafted it. And uh, in all fairness, constitution should not be blamed for uh, abrogation of constitution. India had emergency despite constitution. Constitution was not to be blamed for that. So yes, what we have learned is in addition to a good constitution, we also need mechanisms mm -hmm. so that the constitution book cannot be thrown in the dustbin, mm -hmm. uh, which is what happened in Aam Party pretty much. Uh, so yes, those are lessons we've learned. Uh, and we have incorporated new features, features like uh, information, and above all, features to control personality cult, which is what happened there. So yes, we have learned, we are going ahead. But again, for me to claim that here is a perfect foolproof guaranteed system bound to succeed well the only foolproof things in this world are dead we are living we would make mistakes learn but in a way which is open-ended 
That's what we've learned. So how is it different from AAP then? They are also, Mr. Kesdwal also says on, on every public platform that we are open to, uh, there is nothing foolproof and we are open to suggestions and we will rectify ourselves. So how is it different from AAP then? Number one, it is he who says so. Does that actually happen? You are a journalist, I leave it to you. Public also happens to watch these things. Maybe they would also learn about these things. And in any case, all these things are judged by your practice, not by what you preach. I'll give you a small thing that we have done in Swaraj Abhiyan for the last 18 months. We took a small decision. We said, no photographs on our banners. You know, uh, unless there is one specific function and someone mm. is attending that. Mm. You no know, Prashant Bhushan, Yogi and the other photograph on everything to do with Swaraj Abhiyan. We propose to continue that in Swaraj India. Now, it's been tough because volunteers come and say, we can't go to people unless we have face on the poster. But we said, no, but why can't we be different? It's a small thing, right. but it's a significant thing. Mm. We're trying, we're learning, we're moving forward. And uh, the public examines it. Uh, moving forward uh, on the party itself, uh, there's an interesting term used in the party uh, press release which you sent, presidium system, right? And as far as my knowledge goes, it goes back to the Soviet Union time where people were no nominated. I mean, practically the system is quite famous for the uh, Soviet, Soviet Union's time. So, will these people who will be part of the presidium system will be nominated or they'll be elected by the... Uh, no, 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 all that is written in the constitution. There's nothing Soviet or uh, Marxist or communist mm -hmm. about it. Uh, it's been most famously practiced in Switzerland mm. uh, and in many other parts of the country, the, of the world. Mm. The, the idea is very simple, that instead of one all-powerful president you have a collective body where presidentship is distributed. This is presidium. All of them is part president. Okay. You know, so it's uh, the, the whole idea is collective leadership, collective responsibility, and uh, an attempt to guard against one person cult, something that we were talking about. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about. So there's nothing, no particular reference to any one country or so on. The idea is to give a signal and an institutional mechanism mm -hmm. by which one person does not decide everything. The president is supposed to consult presidium on every single issue. Coming to the transparency yeah. issue, and uh, so the most important part for any party which goes into elections is uh, ticket distribution. And one of the prime uh, different, uh, reasons why differences started uh, coming between you and Mr. Kejriwal during the 2015 elections, I think. Uh, so you're a syphologist, right? You, ha you know how vote banks work, how uh, the caste combination and the religion combination works or the power money muscle power works so while distributing ticket in swaraj india your will the exp i mean as experience as a syphologist will impact your decisions uh, that you will look into the details of vote bank uh, percentage or money muscle <laughs> um, i mean if we wanted to do all that stuff uh, money muscle and so on and so forth then why start a new party there are so many else and they do it so much better than we ever can i mean in money and muscle even if we want to we stand no chance so whatever uh, in any case uh, uh, you know what we are trying to do on candidate selection is something very elementary uh, one of the reasons why political system is so rotten is that you are supposed to work on the ground but the decision about whether you have worked or not and whether you are eligible to even contest next time or so is decided by leaders sitting way beyond you a distant point so any political per person in a party small leader mm -hmm. chota leader also knows that you see working on the ground is all right but showing your face to netaji is far more important mm -hmm. So, in, so very soon you stop working in Badarpur and start moving around Akbar Road. That's what happens in every party. This is the system we want to break. We want to bring in an element of the primary. I don't want to promise more than we can deliver. 
Uh, and that's another lesson we've learned from Aam Aadmi Party. Don't promise big things and then take your turn. Hmm. Promise what you can. So what I'm saying is that we would bring in an element of the primary system, which is where an ordinary worker, ordinary volunteer, has an effective say in deciding who should be the candidate. We have not yet reached a stage where they alone can decide. But what I can assure you is that you would see this party marching in that direction. Is there any uh, leadership crisis in India per se, as in because the personality cult is quite huge. So at the ground level, do you feel uh, that local leaders are not coming up or uh, do you feel, I mean as a political scientist as well otherwise? The crisis is the other way around. There is huge leadership in the country, I see, especially among women. I mean in every single village you have an outspoken woman who doesn't, you know, accept one patriarchal norms but no one no party is willing to adopt her to listen to her uh, young people those from marginal social communities dalits so there is really an upsurge of leadership in this country along with the upsurge of democratic participation mm -hmm. the trouble is that our political system and our parties are unwilling to accommodate them unwilling to accept them and i do hope that uh, new initiatives like swaraj india uh, will become places which would invite such energy. The problem is not that there is a lack of leadership. The problem is that the pre-existing leadership does not want to make room for new leaders. And that pre-existing leadership is very poor quality leadership. Name one politician in India to me who has a 50-year vision for this country, not just three-year vision, five-year vision. Name one politician in this country who has deep convictions about where this country must go, who is willing to look beyond one's narrow personal interest, mm -hmm. who is willing to say something nice about his opponent and say, this is something you did right. Uh, is ideology to do something with the lack of vision in the leadership today? Yes and no. Uh, lack of ideology is a serious uh, crisis right now. But when I say we need ideology, I do not mean we should accept one of the ready-made packages of the 20th century. I'm communist, I'm socialist, I'm mm -hmm. Medkarite, I'm Gandhi. I think what we need to do is what every great movement, individual thinkers have done, namely to bring together some of the best ideas of the previous generation and integrate that in a new vision, which is what Swaraj is. So for me, Swaraj in Swaraj India is not the Swaraj of Hindu Swaraj. It's not the Swaraj of 1947. That was Swaraj 1.0. We are into a new age, Swaraj 2.0. How practical is this Swaraj? Every new vision opens new possibilities. And when you open a new window, someone comes and say, no, 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 it's very uncomfortable. You might get cold, you might get this. But you open new windows because you want to see the world. So yes, uh, the idea of Swaraj, Swaraj 2.0 that I'm talking about, is something that actually opens the possibilities of new practices in politics, which redefines our notions of what is practical. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what it is, and this Swaraj, is not merely Gandhi. It's Gandhi and Ambedkar. It's feminism and socialism. It's environmentalism and uh, economic transformation and enterprise. We want to bring all of that together. So is it, I mean, uh, adopting any certain ideology whenever it is convenient for you or whenever you feel that there's a way for Ambedkarite movement, you adopt Ambedkar's ideology when there's wave of nationalist movement in the country, you go ahead with the nationalist fervor? No, because we start with a document. We have put out a 50-page document for this country, so our Vision Swaraj or Swaraj Darshan, which spells it out. So we are committing ourselves. And yes, we refuse to follow any one book. Mm -hmm. We refuse to follow any one ism. And we refuse to carry the dead weight of the 20th century. Mm. Yes, it would take time for people to slot us because, you know, we want easy descriptions. Uh, we don't want to be slotted. We want to learn from everyone. 
and no. that's how new ideas have always been born in history. Uh, let's go to a rapid fire mode. <laughs> uh, so, uh, what is your principal vote bank right now? In AAP, you had middle class, NT, a graft uh, movement. I don't supporters. think that's a correct description of AAP. Uh, I don't think that would be a correct description for Swaraj India. Mm -hmm. uh, we are not looking at any one vote bank. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, the vote bank, if you wish, is that young Indian who has dreams and aspirations of a different kind of India. Okay. So, uh, you, your party is talking about there will be no whip in the party per se, right? So, what happens to statements like uh, Mr. Prashant Bhushan's on Kashmir? Will, do you, uh, will you stop your members from saying that there should be referendum in Kashmir or they support the idea of Azad Kashmir? Why should a party pretend that every member has same opinion on every single question? We have said, if you are an office bearer, mm -hmm. you have to live within the four walls of the organizational decision. But if you are an ordinary member, why should you not express your views which are different? Maybe tomorrow we learn from you. Can Mr. Bhushan express his opinion as office bearer of Swaraj India that there should be a referendum in Kashmir? Uh, he is not an office bearer of Swaraj India. He is the president of Swaraj Abhiyan okay. and he has taken ordinary membership of this party. And as ordinary member of this party, yes, he has absolute freedom to express his views as long as he makes clear that these are his views on anything. Uh, you may not fully understand his views on Kashmir because people have very uh, stylized notions of what Prashant Bhushan thinks about Kashmir. I think he thinks in a very careful and constructive way. But if his views are different, what's wrong? I mean, this is, isn't it weird that parties claim that we have thousands of people who think exactly the same way? This would be such a poor party. Right. So, and uh, what is your opinion about Mr. Kejriwal's statement on the surgical strike? I heard his video. I did not find anything anti-national about it. Mm -hmm. And I found that entire media propaganda about Desh Drohi and so on quite in poor taste. I think it was a little tongue-in-cheek. It was a little naughty. You could say he was trying to play little political games, mm -hmm. but on that basis to call in Desh Druhi, etc., I thought this was just not on. Swaraj will be a regional political force or national political party? We, from day one, this is Swaraj India. It's not Swaraj Delhi. It's not Swaraj Karnataka. Mm -hmm. But remember, India is always woven in and through regions. So I hope there would be one day Swaraj Karnataka, Swaraj Punjab, Swaraj Nagaland, which would make it Swaraj India. What, so what's your opinion on nationalism then? We are inheritor of some of the, uh, one of the greatest tradition of nationalism in the world. South African struggle against apartheid and Indian nationalism are two finest things in the world. And as an inheritor of that open liberal nationalism, I feel proud of that. And I will not give my nationalism, I will not surrender my nationalism to these jingoist people who did not shed one drop of blood for the freedom of this country. One last question from you. Uh, do you support the force being used in Kashmir by Indian forces or the forces being used in uh, northeastern region or for that matter the naxal prone areas force being used on your own citizens can be the most regrettable part in any democracy it has to be a blot on your democracy if you have to use force against your own citizen how can anyone have two opinions about it the debate is whether there is any other way or not but to use army security force against your own citizens is a matter of deep embarrassment and shame for any civilized country in the world. Thank you for talking with us and all the best for Swaraj India. Delighted. Delighted. Thank you. If you like that, Click here to support us and down here to subscribe to our YouTube channel and do check out the other stuff we do like news laundry interviews, why so serious, animations, comics, panel discussions, podcasts which are really big and much much more.